Today I'm gonna to show you how to travel Vancouver as well as the best things to do in the city. And I'm gonna show you how to make the most of your time here. But if you think that this is going to be your average travel guide, you have no idea what's about to come. Every recommendation that you see here is based off of the last four months of me living here, plus getting to know a ton of other local Vancouverites and hearing what their best suggestions in the city are. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in Vancouver, from beaches and ultimate sunset spots, to outdoor activities, to places to eat, and everything you need to see in the surrounding areas of Vancouver. Without further ado, I'm Will, channel is Sprout. Let's go explore Vancouver. What did I tell you at the beginning of this video? I said, this is not going to be your average travel guide. And because of that, it means we're not going to start by exploring Vancouver. Instead, we're going to go to the opposite side of the water and explore North and West Van. One of the better parts of exploring North and West Van is that the way that you get to go there is via sea bus. So the sea bus is part of Vancouver's public transportation system, but essentially it's this massive boat that brings you from downtown Vancouver to Lonsdale Quay in North Van. And actually, speaking of Lonsdale Key, it is the best market in all of North Vancouver. And right outside of it is actually a beautiful patio that you can go sit and get access to a beautiful view of the skyline of Vancouver. So if you've got a sunny day out here in Vancouver and you're looking for something both sweet and scary, head all the way north to the Capilano Suspension Bridge. Not only is it a gorgeous suspension bridge out in Vancouver, but arguably it has an even nicer park attached to it. Shit. <laughs> Shit, this is high. <laughs> All right, one of the most incredible things I've realized since I've been living here in Vancouver is that in the winter, you can both ski and go to the beach within a half an hour distance from each other. So arguably one of, if not the best places to go skiing in Vancouver is Grouse Mountain. You can actually go skiing here and the weather can still be above zero degrees. And actually, if you don't even go here in the winter, if you come in the summer, you can go check out the Grouse Grind, which is one of the most epic hikes in the city of Vancouver. I have yet to try it, but I've only heard good things. As for West Van, I've been made well aware that it is considered the bougie part of Vancouver, but nonetheless, there are still a ton of things we can do here. Like almost everywhere I'm going to suggest to you, walk down the West Van seawall. If you wanna go shopping at both indoor and outdoor outlets, check out Park Royal. And if you wanna take the extra Uber drive over, which I highly recommend, go to the West Vancouver Lighthouse Park. This is kind of like Stanley Park. It's a perfect area to go hiking with your friends or your family, and it offers an incredible view of the city. Like I said earlier, Vancouver is a West Coast city, and what that means is that most of the things that you're going to see and do here are all going to be outside. That's great, because it means most of the things to do here are free, and it's also great for that immune system. COVID-19, see you later. The first and most obvious outdoor activity you're going to be doing when you visit Vancouver is go to the one and only Stanley Park. Rated the number one city park in the whole world by TripAdvisor, and for good reason. Even though you can't literally live in Stanley Park, you can definitely come here every single day of the year and still not get bored because baby, you got options. Whether you opt for a bike, run, or walk down the seawall, if you're just chilling on the grass and wanna look at a beautiful viewpoint, if you decide you feel like venturing out into the forest and going for a little hike, or if you're down to spend the whole day at a beach, Stanley Park has got it all for you. So even though this is the number one city park in the world, Vancouver definitely has a ton of other city parks that you should check out. And the first one is David Lamb Park. Right in the heart of Yale Town, this is absolutely one of the most underrated parks in the whole city. There's a ton of open space, it's right by the water, and you have a beautiful skyline view of all the Yale Town condo buildings. Regardless of what day of the week it is, you're definitely going to find David Lamb Park packed on any sunny day, because everybody in Vancouver is on that West Coast vibe. So this nice. is Vancouver in a nutshell. City, greenery, greenery, greenery. water, all in one. And last but not least, I think I'd get reported, blocked on YouTube, and honestly probably even hunted down if I made a Vancouver travel video and I didn't include the famous Gastown Steam Clock. It won't speak to you, but it'll definitely sing to you every 15 minutes, and it's the only steam clock tower left in Vancouver. When you come to Vancouver, your first mission should absolutely be to go on one of the many beaches and either go relax or catch a nice sunset. Now I told you there are tons of beaches, so let me show you a few of the best. All right, number one, Sunset Beach. So it gets the name after, well, you guessed it, 
amazing spot to watch the sunset. You can either set yourself up on the huge patch of grass, you can come on the rocks like I am by the water, or you can go anywhere on the beach, grab some friends, grab some drinks, grab some food, and guaranteed every single night, if you show up here on a beautiful day, you're gonna get an awesome sunset view. But the best part about Vancouver is that there isn't one must-see sunset spot. There's actually a ton of different beaches that offer some incredible viewpoints. So now we'll go on to the next one, 15 minute walk away from Sunset Beach, and that is English Bay. This is an awesome sunset spot if you either want to catch one of the biggest crowds in Vancouver, if you want a relaxing beach still in the middle of the city, and if you're near Robson Street. But if you're not into any of that and you want a quiet little time, head over to a much less crowded beach which is called Third Beach out along the Stanley Park seawall. For me personally, this is my favorite beach spot in Vancouver because it's always less crowded than English Bay or Sunset Beach. It's a really good spot to go for a polar dip like any typical Canadian would at any time of the year. If you come to Vancouver, again this water, so cold but pretty awesome feeling. Okay, time to warm these calves up. As a bonus, if you feel like crossing over the bridge, you can head over to Kitts Beach. And if you're feeling a little bit frisky, you can go to the only legalized nude beach in Vancouver, which just so happens to be on the UBC campus. So, you know, I'm pretty sure they set that one up, but that is called Rec Beach. All right, let's move on. So I'm a big believer that besides doing all of the things that you should be doing anytime you visit a city, you should also always make it a point to go and find some of its hidden gems. I'll spare you some time and effort, and I'll give you a few right now. All right, so the first one is the secret lookout spot at Stanley Park. So basically everybody who knows a little bit about the Vancouver seawall around Stanley Park knows that they should be visiting Seawash Rock. So most people will only see the view from ground level, but if you go up and you find this lookout point, you'll get it from an aerial level, and you'll be able to see, in my opinion, one of the more incredible and unique points of view of Vancouver's seawall. Number two is the Cypress Mountain Lookout Spot. So if you're a sucker for lookout points like I clearly am, then you'll wanna go here. You can either make the drive or take the long bus ride up as if you're going to Cypress Mountain, but on the way up the mountain, get off at the lookout spot, and it is one of the rare places in the whole city that you'll actually get a view of not only Vancouver, but the GVA. If you want to see Vancouver in another light, or uh, to put it simply, if you're just feeling a little bit lazy and you don't want to walk anymore, hop aboard the False Creek Ferries and go explore the city by water. And maybe the best part of all is it gets you some shots like these. Like I said earlier, if you travel to Vancouver but you don't leave the downtown core, you haven't done it right. So you actually landed here when you got off the plane at YVR. But if you're in the downtown core right now, the first thing you wanna do is take the SkyTrain, which you can hear right above me, down to Richmond. Fun fact of the day for everyone who doesn't know, Richmond is the most Asian city in all of North America, meaning it has the highest percentage population of Asian descent at 77.4, which means everything we're gonna be doing in Richmond has to do with the Asian culture. If you want a true taste of what it's like to eat and shop, in a market in Asia, go to the Richmond Public Market. This is absolutely your closest bet to anything like it. Go for the bubble tea. First bubble tea, right? That's crazy. Mm. Mm. And go and dip out of your comfort zone and try some food at one of the local food stalls. For one of the weirdest culinary experiences that you'll ever have, walk into the parking lot of one of Richmond's many strip malls and find this little restaurant gem called Hong Kong Barbecue Master. Essentially, when I went last January, they were closed for indoor dining, so the only thing that we could do on a rainy day in Richmond was take spot 078 in the parking lot and have a beautiful first date right there. All right, yo, you wanna ditch this pop stand, go eat somewhere classier? All right, look, in all seriousness, you go to Richmond because if you walk around for just five minutes, you'll realize that most of the street signs in the city actually start with Asian letters rather than English. Like I said before, Richmond is the most Asian city in North America and it shows exactly that because when you walk in, you no longer feel like you're in Canada, but in reality, you're only 30 minutes away from Vancouver. Like for example, I walked into a restaurant and when I was eating, Nobody in the restaurant spoke English, and when I walked in with Sharon, everybody looked at us like we weren't meant to be there. You know when you're like the only non-locals in the building? 
that you're doing something right. I mean, everyone's from here, but it seems like we're in a totally different world. <laughs> All right, for those of you who have ever been in a relationship, you can agree that you never really know who you're dating until you've met both their friends and their family. Now the exact same principle applies to any city that you travel to. So we've seen Richmond, we've seen North and West Van. Now we need to see some day trips from Vancouver. Perhaps the most obvious one of them all, Whistler. Arguably the skiing capital of Canada, and the home of the 2010 Winter Olympics. I don't really have that much to say about Whistler except if you don't go, you're missing out. About 45 minutes away from Vancouver, right in Squamish, is a hike called The Chief. Now this is absolutely going to shred your lower body and your calves, but besides that slow, shredding feeling, you're going to see one of the best views of Squamish and the surrounding area that you can find. And then while we're on the topic of hiking, another one that you can do is called Tunnel Bluffs. This one is just half an hour outside of Vancouver, and once you get to the top, which again, unfortunately, has a steep uphill climb like the Chief, you will see a beautiful view of Howe Sound and Vancouver Island. Between Whistler, the Chief, and Tunnel Bluffs, you're going to get an insane amount of reasons as to why Canada is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. All right, now let's get to the part that all of you are definitely waiting for, and that is the, nom, 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 the food. So believe it or not, Vancouver actually has an incredibly diverse food scene, but the cuisine that will rock your socks off is the Asian cuisine. But again, I just showed you Richmond. I don't wanna to focus too much on the Asian cuisine. So let me show you a couple of restaurants you should go to. All right, so number one is Ramen Danbo. So I am no big soup guy at all, but this is absolutely the best, most authentic Japanese ramen you can get in the city. Go here if you enjoy Japanese ramen, but most importantly, go here if you need a fix from yesterday's hangover, or if it's another rainy day in a rain Vancouver. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Vancouver. Up next, lots of great dessert spots in Vancouver, but Kartem Donuts is an absolute must. Some pretty unique flavors here. Again, not a big donut guy. It's crazy that I'm recommending a bunch of foods that I don't usually eat, but that is just a testament to how good these places are. And then head over to Granville Island, which in and of itself has tons of great food options. Granville Island is kind of like a cute little town right inside of Vancouver with the market, with cute shops and nice restaurants, and it's all located on the water. It reminds me of any little ski town that you go to just because of the colors of the buildings and all the little attractions. Seems like there's no big name stores here, just a lot of really local shops. But the best place you can go to is the Granville Island Public Market. Go here for some of the freshest meat, fish, and produce. And if you don't feel like making your own food, go to one of the many food stalls and go sit right outside with a beautiful skyline view of the city. Some quick hitters include Miku, which is very expensive, but also insanely good sushi. The Ark, which is an all-you-can-eat brunch at the Fairmont Hotel that I would honestly sell my arm for. Chickpea, which is the best vegan food that I've ever had in my life. And Japa Dog, which is a late night grub spot, but it's unique because it's Vancouver's version of Japanese style hot dogs. So that would pretty much sum up how to send it in a million different ways while you stay in Vancouver. This is the West Coast. Like the first three months that I spent in Vancouver, I couldn't stop saying, is this really Canada? But it is, and that is a true testament to both the city and the country. And with that, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more travel content about Vancouver, consider subscribing to Sprout. I'm Will. It's a mindset. I'll see you next time.